OK, so you've had an offer accepted on a property and people have started talking about draft contracts. So what do they mean by that? Why isn't it just a contract? Why a draft contract? And when does it actually become a contract? I'll explain it all after this short intro. I'm Tim Hill, internet entrepreneur, property investor and author of How to Really Buy a Property. No. It's not one of those books that goes on and on about how you can make millions investing in property and all you have to do is go on my course to learn the secrets and then you go on my course and you find out that you have to go on my master course to learn the real secrets. None of that. If you have decided to buy a property, no matter what your motivation, then how to really buy a property is the smart way to do it. And it will save you time, money and stress. Okay, so you've had your offer accepted and people have said that they're going to be sending out draft contracts. Your solicitor has maybe said he's waiting for a draft contract. Right, first of all, what's the contract? The contract is one of the smaller pieces of uh, documentation involved in buying a property. It's really just got uh, who you are, the buyer, who the vendor is, the seller, uh, how much you're going to pay for the property, uh, what the property actually is, the address of it, and when it's all going to go down. Right, so why draft contract? Well, the, the big question is, when is this transaction going to go down? Now, you might want to say, I want to move in as soon as possible, but there's going to be plenty of stuff that needs to be sorted out before you can do that, especially if you're getting a mortgage or another loan to buy the so, um, for example, you might want to check if there's anything planned for the area. Your mortgage company certainly will. Uh, for example, that building across the road, did it just apply for planning permission to become a nightclub? These sort of things might affect the value of the property. So you've made this offer and you made the offer assuming that that building across the road was just a building across the road. Maybe it's just a furniture store. Uh, and now you suddenly find out it's actually going to become a seven nights a week nightclub. And that might affect your decision to buy, or it certainly might affect your offer. Uh, you're also going to have, need to have a survey done. Someone go around an independent third party and say what they think the value of the property is. That's definitely going to be the case if you want a mortgage. So. The actual figure you're going to buy for, that's on the contract, and when you're going to buy, these are both things that we don't know yet because we've got lots of third parties coming in to do different jobs. Uh, we've got solicitors who need to do different things. Now, certainly, once you've had your offer agreed at that very first stage, it is a really good idea to get some kind of agreement with the vendor about when you both want the deal to go down. Okay, that might not perfectly happen because of solicitors, because of local authorities, and because of managing agents, for example, all these people that you need to ask for information from, and they all need to give that information. They might be really fast, or they might be really slow, or they might just be really incompetent, and you have to ask again, or your solicitor has to ask again and again. But uh, for this reason, you can't definitely say when you want to move in, but you can lay the groundwork and it's a really good idea to do that. So that the vendor has got some idea, you want to move in fast, uh, the vendor might be concerned if you said, hey, you know, I want to move in in about four months time and they're thinking, well, the property's empty. Actually, if you're going to be that slow, maybe I want to go and look for a buyer who's going to move faster. So during this time, when you just have draft contracts out, uh, the, the property is also known as sold subject to contract. Uh, and you'll see that very often on the sign that goes up outside the property, perhaps on the internet as well. You'll see your property is still there and it says sold subject contract, which means it is sold but subject to this contract being agreed, subject to the draft contract becoming a real contract. Now, after your solicitor has collected all the paperwork they need, and there's a, a general format for that that most people agree on. Um, it's written down in what's called the Council of Mortgage Lenders Handbook. That's something that certainly solicitors will need to do if you're getting a mortgage. 
but they also just generally recommend it as due diligence. You really do want to know what's planned for the area. It can be a good idea to get a surveyor to go around and, you know, just give their view on the valuation. Although, <clears throat> to be honest, if you're buying completely for cash, you don't need a surveyor to do that. Hopefully you've done your homework, you've gone, you've viewed lots of properties and you know that that property is worth that kind of price. Uh, but certainly with a mortgage involved, the bank is going to want that third party, the surveyor, to go around and say, yeah, I agree this property is worth this much. So uh, we are sold subject to the contract being agreed. So we go all the way down the line, we collect all the bits of paperwork that need to be collected, uh, we discover some things we didn't know perhaps, and we talk to the vendor about it, and perhaps we agree to change the price a little bit, reflecting some of the things we've discovered. But there comes the day when all that paperwork is gathered together, and it's ready to stop being a draft contract. It's at that point that the vendor signs the contract, and you sign the contract. Now, they're actually separate bits of paper. You've signed one, he signed the other, but they are identical. Now, what the solicitors do, they take those contracts. The vendor's solicitor takes the vendor's contract. Your solicitor takes your contract that you've signed and they swap them over. And this is what's called the exchange of contracts. Now, it doesn't always happen in a, it happens in a physical way. But the moment that contracts exchange isn't actually at that physical moment. It's when the two solicitors phone each other up and say, OK, you've got buyer's contract, you've got seller's contract. Shall we exchange? And the other solicitor says, yes, let's exchange. And then they say something like, OK, it's 1032 on the 5th of August. Uh, and they make a little note of that. And that's when you exchange. So then those contracts have moved from being draft contracts to be in contracts which are legally binding. You must now buy the property and the vendor must now sell. Up until that point, it has always just been an agreement that either of you could walk away from with no particular obligation. As soon as contracts have exchanged, you must theoretically both go through with it. If you don't go through with it, usually an exchange of contracts, you've paid some deposit money, you'd lose that, the vendor would take that. Uh, if the vendor doesn't go through with it, then there are <laughs> legal pathways that you can follow, but it's just so rare that uh, vendors don't go through with it. Uh, now, at that exchange of contracts, the date on the contract is when you're actually going to move in. It's not the date the contracts are exchanged. That just means that there's a legally binding situation now of the date that you're going to take possession of the property. It's normally a week after you exchange contracts, although it can be longer. It can even be the same moment, what's called simultaneous exchange and completion. But usually that date of completion, when you will actually take the keys for the property, is a little bit in the future. Allows people, you know, to confirm things with their removals companies and so on. Now, a bit weird, but after you've exchanged contracts, it's a real contract, it's not a draft contract, everything is legally binding, your property is still known as sold subject to contract. And it's just because you've got this shorthand going on. Beforehand, you had sold subject to contract because the contracts hadn't been signed, they were just draft contracts. After exchange of contracts, You've got sold subject to the contract being completed, being honoured by both of you. And that won't happen until you've paid the balance for the property, the vendor's moved out, and you've got the keys and taken possession and uh, the date of completion. So always, from the moment your offer is agreed, it's always sold subject to contract either sold subject to the contract being agreed and signed or sold subject to the contract being honoured on completion date. So that's contracts and that's why you have draft contract before you actually have contract. That's all for this short video. There's much more information in the book, how to really buy a property. 
As always, if you found this information useful, please remember to subscribe, to share, to like, to do all those social media things. It all helps other people who need this information find it more easily. If you've got some specific questions which you'd like me to have a go at answering, please put them in the comments below and I'll try and get to them. And in the meantime, good luck with your property purchase.